Just thought I'd do a quick video just to show you guys where I'm at um, in this game development process. Um, as some of you, I guess, know, I'm working on a digital board game, uh, specifically a traditional hex encounter board game, kind of an old school throwback. Um, I'm trying to keep it, I guess, straightforward and basic um, while at the same time streamlined, so I don't want to get too fiddly like maybe some of the older games were um, so bringing kind of the best of both worlds new and old um, and of course just keeping it simple because this is going to be on a device um, but I just wanted to show you guys where I am in the process and like you know uh, maybe get some feedback from people um, like on the mechanics and you know sp specifically like how the game flows um, all that good stuff. So, um, without further ado, uh, if you take a look here, um, some of these things are not final, like this navigation is just there for development purposes. So, uh, the map still being worked on, although I think I have some direction there. Um, same with the pieces, like this is some of the artwork, uh, but the not complete artwork. Um, I've got the counter numbers there. You can probably not see them, but they're next to the names. Um, again, for development purposes, same with the hexes here. Um, so let me zoom in a little bit. And you can kind of see how the game's gonna flow. Um, so right now we're in the movement phase, as you can see down here. It's not a real battle, um, so, you know, disregard the positioning and all that stuff that'll change um but we're in the movement phase so you can see we've got the uh counters that can move or the hexes that can that have counters that can move highlighted so we are the macedonians right now in orange so i can if it's just one i can just click it and move it if it's a stack i can cl click expand it pick the one i want and move um Stacking limits right now, I've got uh, hard-coded at three counters, not including leaders. So um, I'm not going by any unit strength or anything. I'm just It's just a hard stop at three, but you can have as many leaders as you want, although it would be a bad idea um, to do that. Um, but uh, so a little word about the, uh, the numbers here. Using traditional hex encounter... Um, values the first one is uh, strength one attacking specifically the second one here is defense and the third one here is movement um, some of the counters and really all, here i'm using almost all ranged units again this is just testing um, so you can see they have this additional number here which is uh their range so this is the one unit here one infantry unit that doesn't have it so um, just a heavy infantry um, yeah, so if we, I'll just move a few more just so you can see how that works. Um, and, you know, there's Philip and Alexander. If I wanted to grab this guy, um, he can't move here to this stack for a couple of reasons. One is the stacking limit that I just mentioned, but I do have um, zone of controls here. So he, uh, because because he's adjacent to this unit, he's limited to how far he can go. Um, it just depletes his movement points, um, so he can only go one, you can see, in either any direction, really. Um, so let's cancel that. Say done with movement. Um, so now we're in the ranged combat phase, and you can see down here. Um, I think I'm going to do an animation so that's more clear um, in the middle of the screen that you've switched phases. Uh, I don't think it's clear enough seeing this down here. But um, again, you could see the ones that are the units that are capable of ranged fire right now, meaning they, they can do ranged fire and they have someone that they can shoot at in the vicinity, in their vicinity. So let's pick this guy and then you pick his target. So I've, I'm showing the, uh, the ranged unit that's shooting and the uh, target unit. I think I have to clean this up a little bit um, and explain it better. Um, but then you can see this roll button appears, and we roll a D10. Right now, um, that was a miss. Right now, uh, I've just got it that uh, you hit on a 9, and 8s and 7s cause, cause retreats. Um, I'm going to modify that a little bit where it's going to take terrain uh, 
it's going to factor in terrain and maybe uh, make it a little easier to hit. I, I didn't want to overpower the ranged units, <clears throat> but right now I think they're that's the opposite. They're just, you know only getting a hit on a nine is pretty weak, um, so I want to give them a little more um, strength than that. Um, so uh, I'll take one more shot at one of these guys since they're so powerful. Oh, okay, caused a retreat. That's good. Um, so that's ranged fire. Um, ranged fire, you can't really see it here because how it's laid out, but it does uh, use traditional board game um, uh, line of sight. So other than being in within range, you also, you know, there are certain terrains that block it. Um, if another, if there's another stack in the way it blocks it, if it goes along a hex side, um, it would have line of sight. Um, but just like in the board game versions, the analog versions, if two hexes are occupied, it does not have line of sight. Um, and that's pretty much ranged fire. So close combat. Um, this was, this was tricky. Uh, again, I, I, I referenced so many other uh, board games and uh, a couple of online digital ones I saw, and uh, I took the approach that you, when entering the close combat phase, you pick your victims first, basically. So you pick the hex you're going to attack, and you're not picking individual units here. You are attacking the entire hex, so anybody that's in that. Um, so let's take this guy since he's by himself. Should be an easy victory. So I click on that. Right away, I get my CRT, which again, this is not the final um, graphic design for this. Um, and now uh, we have the victim, we have the hex that we're going to attack, and then we have a couple of options for which hexes to draw our attackers from. So um, I can pick individually here, and as you see, one, once I do that, it... Uh, shows me my arrow that the, the attack's coming from there. Um, I can also, th this button is a select all button. I haven't put, in the, put the graphics in yet, but this is a select all button. So I can pick everybody um, or deselect everyone. And I can just close the stack. So now it shows you that everyone here is attacking this guy. And you can see that reflected in the CRT table here. So now we've got three to one odds um, against this one p lone Peltis, which is pretty good. So let's just roll. See what happens. Oh, that's a typical roll for me. So, so nothing happens despite the uh, us ganging up on him. Ah, classic, classic me. So, um, so that ended that uh, close combat. So if we go here, we're gonna be outnumbered, but let's do it anyway. Um, so we got two infantry units here that we're attacking, um, and they're pretty powerful. Again, they, these are not the final numbers. I just want to do some testing. Um, so let's. Pick our crew. We got two leaders. Again, bad idea, but that's how I stacked them. Um, so when you are, when you're attacking, um, I only let you pick one leader, and that's really for your benefit. So if you pick try to pick another one, it's going to toggle to um, turn off the previous one you had, um, and that's because. Uh, Choosing another leader the way I've got um, my rules set up is not really beneficial. It's not going to add anything else. Um, you're going to get a modifier, as you can see here, attacking leader modifier. Um, so, you know, you get one or the other. There's no, there, there'd be no reason to add a second leader. Um, so let's just take Philip since here, um, Philip's stronger. Alexander's still young. Um, let's pretend. And uh, we'll take them and we'll add this guy so this wasn't a stack so I didn't have to pick anyone so it just automatically picks the one counter that's there um, now you could see how powerful these guys are we are at a disadvantage at one to three odds so not too good so let's roll and yeah it was bad um, so a lot of things are happening right now so that's because our close combat ended and it auto automatically went into the next phase and that's the AI did all their movement um, you know, everyone's pretty much programmed to do ranged fire here, except obviously these infantry. Um, they're, uh, I'm, I'm still working on the infantry AI. They're kind of gun shy. They, they're, they're not stacking how I want. Uh, I want them to really gang up on you and look to, um, you know, really surround you and get, uh, get next to your weak units, and they don't do that now. Um, but that's it. Um, that's all I wanted to show you, a little preview. Happy to get any feedback you guys have. Um, would love to hear it. This game's still in development, so forgive any crude graphics you might see. Um, 
But anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.